Automatic CSS is a wildly popular CSS framework that was built for the WordPress ecosystem and the Oxygen Page Builder. Recently, the author of Automatic CSS started branching out into other page builders such as Bricks and looking at Gutenberg. With a lot of Oxygen users leaving that platform, I've been hearing a lot of questions about the Pinegrove Page Builder and whether Automatic CSS can be used with it. In this video, I'm going to take a look at just how we can do that. So first off, let me start by saying that this is probably not the best idea to do right now. Automatic CSS doesn't officially support anything except for WordPress. And in order to get this working, I actually went back to a pre-release version of Automatic CSS, where you package it just as plain CSS files as opposed to a WordPress plugin. So what you're going to see here is not what you'll see if you go into the WordPress plugin folder. Having said that, I'm doing this to show that it is possible, and I know that the author of Automatic CSS does plan to support things outside of WordPress at some point in time. The core CSS files that are part of Automatic CSS are Fallback CSS, FlexGrid, Main, and Vars. If we open up the installation instructions that came with the pre-release version of Automatic CSS, you'll see that you've got to do a few things. So the first things that you have to do are add these CSS files into Oxygen. The process for PineGrow was a whole lot easier than this. So what I did to set things up, I just copied those CSS files into the CSS folder inside of my project. And then from there, I could just select each of these files and drag it right into the page. What that did is it added links inside the header for fallback.css, variables, the main, and the FlexGrid CSS files. If we take a look at the code for the HTML file, you'll see those right up here in the header. The next thing I did is come down to the setup portion of the installation document. And this is where it says that I need to set up the viewport, uh, set up some colors, and set up some text sizes. So I opened up the automatic variables CSS file and set all those properties right in here. That's all I needed to do with the CSS files. So I went over to the style section inside of PineGrow, clicked on my style sheets, and for each of the uh, style sheets that were in here, I just locked them so that I wouldn't edit them by mistake. So you'll see that I've got fallbacks locked. I have my variables unlocked, although I could lock that now that I've set them. I've got my main and I've got my flexgrid.css locked. You also notice that I have those same things referenced in my style.css. And the reason for that's going to become apparent once I export the Gutenberg blocks. So coming back to the page, you'll see that I have uh, a header built here and a hero section. And for these, I tried to use the automatic CSS classes as much as possible. So we'll come over to the element properties and I'll just start clicking around so that you can see what I have. We'll start with the header. You'll see that I've got the background primary class working. And if I click on the class over here in the properties editor, I can turn that on and off. I've got some container padding set up. I've got some alignment classes. And then I have a few custom classes that I made. One of the big things that I noticed in this process is that some of the sizes didn't come over. So for example, the responsive sizes for the pages didn't quite work right. And I suspect it's that way because inside of PineGrow, we're dealing with native divs. And inside of Oxygen, they had some places where there were nested divs. And Automatic CSS was designed to accommodate that. Again, I think once Kevin makes Automatic CSS platform independent, these issues are going to go away. So I'm not going to bore everybody by showing you every single class that I put in here. But suffice it to say that most of them work. I haven't run into any major issues aside from those spacing problems. So even though I didn't run into problems, I did notice some other quirks. And the biggest one ended up being related to, again, sizing. Um, so if I come over here and look at my classes, to get this text, this company text sized the right way, I had to apply two different text classes to it. So for example, if I tried to apply text larger, it didn't do anything. If I applied text large, it would. And then if I wanted it to be text larger, I would have to apply text large and then text larger. But just text larger by itself didn't do anything. When I came over and actually looked at what the classes were doing, it sort of made sense. But again, it's one of those things that would need to get addressed in the framework ultimately. Um, so let's take a look. Text large sets the size and then text larger takes that size of text large and just makes that a little bit bigger. So that's the reason why text larger wouldn't work. But if I applied text large and then text larger, it did. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come and I'm going to export those blocks. And all I've done here is I've already set up my WordPress uh, theme and plugin settings. I'm not going to go through all that right now, but I've turned this header into a block and I've given it the ID, the title, an icon, category, all that good stuff. And I've done the same thing for this hero section. So I mentioned how I needed to import the automatic CSS files into the styles.css. And the reason for that is because using PineGrow, you can have one style sheet associated with a block and one editor style sheet associated with it. So here I have style.css. 
So from there, I've imported a normalized CSS as well as the automatic CSS files. I also have this Guten admin.css file that undoes some of the strange things that Gutenberg does on the admin side. So I've got that for the header. Let's do the same thing for my hero section. Save the project, export the plugin. And now when we look at the plugin directory that was exported, we'll see that we've got the blocks for the header and the hero. In the CSS directory, I've got my automatic CSS files, my Guten admin CSS file, my normalize and a style.css. And then in my include folder, I have my helpers and my custom.php that I'm not really doing anything with here. Coming over to my test WordPress site, I see that I have the Pinegrove ACSS test plugin. I'll activate that. We'll come over to a test page. And let's edit the blocks. We're going to click on the plus button. All the way at the bottom, I've got my Pinegrove ACSS. I'm going to add the header. I'm going to add the hero block. We'll hit update, view page, and you can see that I've got it right there. Again, coming back into the editor, you'll notice some weird things like this text is cut off and some of the sizes don't quite look right. Again, a lot of that has to do with the Gutenberg styles. If we come back to the page view, you'll also see that this looks a little bit different than it did in the Pinegro editor. So around this uh, horizontal rule, there's a bunch of extra spacing there. And the reason for that, if I do an inspect, you'll see inside my header, Got my div for the top part, my nav part, and then right here, around the horizontal rule, we've got something that's adding some extra margin. So let's find out what's adding that extra margin. And it turns out that that extra margin is being added by my theme, which in this case is generate press. So again, that's something else that you need to look out for is that your theme also puts some styles in, which can potentially override what you're trying to do. If you look at the Pinegrow documentation, they really do advise that you create your own theme using Pinegrow as opposed to using a third-party theme. And this is a big part of the reason why, because those third-party themes do have their own styles that get injected into whatever you're using. If I had done this as a theme instead of a plugin, we wouldn't have those issues here. However, if you're just creating a block that you want to be able to pick up and put onto any theme, you probably want to take some of those things into consideration and make sure that you're defining all the properties for spacing and everything to reduce the risk of your theme butting in. So what are the next steps? We really need to wait for Kevin to turn this into a platform independent framework so that we can use it with other things like Pinegrow and that it's not tied to something like Oxygen, Bricks, or any other builder. Once he's done that, it should be easy enough to integrate into Pinegrow just by dropping the files in and setting some properties. Pinegrow already has a SAS compiler built in, so that takes care of that dependency. And because we're working with raw HTML, we shouldn't have to worry about overriding things that other builders put in place as helpers. If we get really ambitious, we should be able to build a plugin for Pinegrow. If we come down to Manage Libraries and Plugins, all the way at the bottom, We've got a link that shows how to create Pinegrow plugins. And then, and then from there, we can go down to the developer documentation and the process is pretty simple. What that would let us do is to automatically integrate this without having to go through all those manual steps in the beginning. We can even go so far as to modify this create new page or project panel to add automatic CSS in as well as some pre-built pages and templates. The other cool thing that Pinegrow lets us do is it lets us create custom controls around different frameworks. So for example, I've got the Tailwind framework loaded up here. If you come down to the properties panel, you'll see that we've got visual controls to set some of the properties for that framework. So these we have for Tailwind. If we load up a bootstrap page, you can see that we've got bootstrap specific controls. And if we load up a foundation page, you can see we have foundation controls. As a start, I'd love to see a platform independent version of Automatic CSS so that we can use it with tools like Pinegrow or Visual Studio Code. But eventually creating a visual panel, something like this inside of Pinegrow for Automatic CSS would make this such a useful platform. If you have more questions, feel free to tag me inside the Automatic CSS group or email me directly at info at peakperformancedigital.com.